I don't usually find that it's uh, appropriate or professional to record videos uh, while I'm at work on the clock. It is 10.33 a.m. September 15th, 2020. And the reason I'm doing this is because it is actually relevant to my job. Scientific American, that scholarly journal, just announced it is supporting Joe Biden for president. And this is not because it's about Joe Biden, it's because of two things that science must have and must not do. First of all, science is supposed to be objective and nonpartisan. When a scientific publication, or one that pretends to be such, decides to throw its weight behind a presidential candidate or any elected official, it ceases to be objective and becomes a partisan endeavor. This calls into question whether or not any of its conclusions, publications, or ideas can ever be trusted henceforth and forever, because politicians wield power. Now, we all know when businesses do this that their conclusions are of dubious validity, but when a supposedly scientific organization out and out, officially and openly backs a candidate, then you can be pretty sure that their objectivity is an, at an end. These are supposed to be organizations that are above that. Now, I tell my students the first couple of weeks of, of each semester when we talk about the scientific method, when we talk about science and pseudoscience, that pretty much everyone is for sale. I'm paid too. I'm paid by the state. I am paid, and there are things I'm supposed to cover. For example, this is the gas law lab. This is the information I'm supposed to cover, and these are the exercises in order to teach them about gases. But within the realm of that two pages, I am free to say whatever I like or to present it however I like because of academic freedom. So I'm not told to the same way they will be because Scientific American will now get in bed with government. And the same would be the case if Scientific American had backed Joe Biden's opponent. The other problem I had with it that I, makes me know that it's pseudoscience is because they said, quote, it is a matter of life and death, end quote. This is on their Twitter account. I'll try and remember to post the link. That's pretty emotional language. And science, let's see, Aristotle said that reason, let's see, the law is reason free from passion, and science must be data free from opinions. Now, I realize that this video in some way comes across as an opinion, but that's because I am discussing an opinion the way I interpret the way science is supposed to be. When you start using emotional language in your claims, and I spend time with students every semester talking about how these are awful, that the words that we choose, the emotions they evoke, and the argumentum ad misericordium associated therewith clearly puts any of those endeavors into the category of pseudoscience. And pseudoscience is something that ought to be dismissed by any actual purveyor of the scientific disciplines. It, of course, won't be because Scientific American has now sided with many scientists, and there will be other scientists who disagree, and then those who agree will conclude that there's a consensus because everyone they know and like agrees with them, and the same would have been true if Scientific American had chosen the other candidate. In order to be objective, in order to publish truth, in order to be above the fray, in order to actually advance humanity without bias, we have to do science without bias. And we have to not show our bias, because we have it. We're humans. Fact of the matter is, is we're all going to take sides. But we can't show it in a public forum. I don't go into class and tell them I'm on a certain side. I will present things that I believe they need to know, and then I let them govern themselves, because that is what I am supposed to do as an educator, is give them information, help them to use it well, and then let trust them that they will. Partisan political pandering no longer trusts people to use the information well, and it is usually associated with every form of despotism. You can read Orwell, or Huxley, or whoever wrote... Um, Oh, the Giver, Loris Lowry. You can read their books. And in all those societies, science has become a tool of the government rather than being separate from it. And that's where science must remain.
People will continue to manipulate science anyway. But when science decides to manipulate people, that's when science ceases to be for all mankind. I'm Douglas Walton. I approve of this message and I disprove of Scientific American. They're dead to me and they should be dead to you. But I will let you decide for yourself because that's what I ought to do.